Today we're making uh, banana bread. It is a very delicious banana bread. Everybody at some point in time has bananas that have become overripe. Don't throw them away. These are good to make. Uh, these are good to make a delicious treat for the family. Good for lunches if everybody goes to school or work ever again. All right, we're going to start with uh, our shortening. So over here, I've got my mixer ready. And we're going to put in a quarter cup of shortening. Now, my daughter told me that it gives her a heart attack when I don't measure. So today, we're going to measure so that she can have good heart health. Looks good enough. All right, slap that in. I was also told that I need to be more appetizing with food. So I'm going to give that a good go. Right. <laughs> these are not live streams. These are videos. So this is fun. All right. I am using the paddle of my... Someone's broken this. Lock the doors. Okay, so there's a little issue with the KitchenAid. And if you've used a KitchenAid, you know the same thing. Never gets down to the bottom. There is a pan you can uh, order from KitchenAid. It's a little shallower. It's very good, except it's not for everything. So I'm going to turn this up. There we go. All right, we want to make sure that our sugar and our shortening are incorporated together. These are not hard to make. This is a fast, quick, somebody's coming home from school and you need a snack. That's all this is for. But I'm going to show you a little trick today that makes mine a little extra special. Okay, lower it, and we're going to put in two eggs. You may see in my live streams and in my videos that I throw things into the sink. I do that because I have a garburator, and I compost that way. No, I call it composting. It's not. Okay, let's incorporate that. Two eggs, two large eggs. We're going we're gonna to mix that up. It's nice enough. It's not really mixing it well. Nicer look. Scrape down our sides. I find when I'm watching videos, cooking videos, and I do a lot, I'm always frustrated when I want to do something and I see them not doing it. So... I'm going to try and do those things so you don't get frustrated. Scrape down the sides. Next thing. Next thing we're going to do is uh, put in our overripe bananas. You'll see they're a little on the mushy side. Yes, into my sink. I get rid of those strings. I'm not quite sure about those. Sweet bananas, you know, they can go too far. Some people freeze them. I don't really care to do that myself, but if you do freeze them, put them in a Ziploc bag or some kind of uh, plastic bag because then they won't seep that syrup into your freezer. All right, so now we're getting a little bit more quantity there to mush. We want to make sure those bananas, some people would have mashed those. I didn't need to do that. I do want them smashed up though. Awesome. All right, that's a really nice mixture now. So uh, we're going to put in one minute. Put the dry ingredients right in there. Don't like that. So this is cake and pastry flour. And some of you may have not have used this before. Or you can use all purpose flour. It's a little tough. All right, there's one cup. I could add it right into there, but I don't want to. I want to add it into a bowl first so I can mix all my dry ingredients together. I'm 
Okay, scant cups, two cups. Well, see, that's why I didn't put it just a little tiny hole in it, and that's making a mess. I don't keep this in its own container because I don't use it that much. All right, next thing we want to do is uh, two teaspoons of baking powder. Do you know that I have made this recipe at least 300 times, and I still have to double check on measurements. It's not like cooking. In baking, you have to be precise. Did I say two? Yes, two baking powder. One, two, it's baking powder. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. You'll notice I'm using baking soda. That tells you that buttermilk is coming. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then there will be a little bit of salt. One teaspoon of salt. All right, perfect. Now, what we want to do with that is we want to combine that so that everything is mixed nicely. We're looking at uh, increasing our camera ability. We're thinking uh, that we're going to be putting a boom in so that you can see right down into my bowls because as a YouTube watcher, as a cooking show watcher, I like to see down into the bowls. Okay, that's perfect. So now that's going to go in, but that doesn't just get dumped in. Now we want to take a measuring cup and we want to put in buttermilk. So we're going to put in half a cup of buttermilk, Kawartha Dairy buttermilk. I live in Kawartha Lakes and you cannot beat Kawartha Dairy products. They're fresh, they're local, and they are very reasonably priced. Okay, here's the little trick. You're going to put in a little bit of almond flavoring there, not vanilla. You're going to put in a little bit of almond flavoring, maybe a half a teaspoon. It doesn't taste like almond. It tastes, it brings out the banana flavor. Quite good. Make sure that that's combined. Now, two things I didn't add into my dry ingredients, but I will now because I wanted to give you an option are cinnamon and nutmeg. You can add that into your dry ingredients if that's your kind of thing, and it is for us. We like cinnamon in this house. Maybe not in the summertime. I don't know why cinnamon always tastes a little bit better in the wintertime, and it is winter here. So a little bit of cinnamon. Again, gave my daughter a heart attack. I didn't measure. Just put enough in that you feel like it's the right thing. This is a whole nutmeg. I like to use this. This is a rasp. I don't just get the ground. This is a whole nutmeg. You just put in, you just grate it on your rasp, but you don't have a rasp, then buy the ground nutmeg. It'll, it'll work as good. It's just not as bright of a flavor. So put in maybe quarter teaspoon, lovely flavor. Maybe it's not your thing. You choose those last, those last few ingredients if you want the cinnamon. Maybe you're sitting back saying she should be putting in cloves. She should be putting in more nut, more cinnamon. That is your preference. Remember, those are dry ingredients, though, so you don't want to add too many. All right, we're going to lower it. We are going to add in in thirds. In third, so we have about three quarter cup there. We'll incorporate this in. Add a little bit of your liquid at the same time. Wait till that is incorporated in. Get your. This is not a difficult recipe. It's not a difficult dish. It's just delicious. Okay. I'm starting to smell the banana flavor coming coming out. Add some more of your flour. 
Now, if you do bake a little bit, you're going to say, well, which one does she end with? You always end with the, the liquid. You could shut it off and then scrape. So I'm not dislocating my elbow. All right, nice. Nice. This is helping any little chunks of banana smash up. All right, let's add in the last of our flour. Okay, let's lift that, incorporate that in. And I've got a little bit of liquid. Don't be tempted to add more liquid. Don't be tempted to say, that doesn't look like enough. I need more and add some. You will be sorry. You will get a tough cake. Very nice. I'm going to speed it up a bit. Okay, there is a fine line between under beating and over beating. You over beat it, and you are going to have too much gluten formed. If you under beat it, you're going to taste the flour. And nobody wants to taste the flour. All right, clean off my paddle. Scrape down to the bottom. And this was the issue I was saying everybody finds with a KitchenAid. Now, this is not all, like the bananas are not all chopped up. I like that. We like that here. Okay, here is a little add-on if you'd like. These blueberries have been washed beforehand, and I put them back in here. I'm going to say this many, maybe half a cup. They're pretty big blueberries. You could add nuts. You could add cranberries. You could add raisins, chocolate chips. People do like that. And I can see that the baking soda and the buttermilk are making it really nice and frothy, delicious. You want to grease your pans. I use a spray. I love these little pans. These are just tiny little pans. You can give them away. You can freeze and store. You don't have a great big amount all at once and then you can have it fresh rather than a little on the old side yes this is okay I always use this after I don't see if very many cooks do that or bakes do that but I do that after to re remove any excess and to make sure that it is completely spread out evenly great those are ready to go. So let's get these filled and into the oven. I have maybe about three cups of batter. I'm going to spread that evenly between three, about halfway. I think this is going to be a really nice banana bread. If I decide that it's too much, don't overfill your pans. You'll have too much and your cakes will go up and round. I think it's nice though. I think it's gonna be just perfect. So if you don't have these individual pans, you could make muffins. It makes about a dozen muffins, or you can put it in one loaf pan. Do not tap your pan like boom, boom, boom. Don't do that. You are making all that nice leavening agent flatten out and not and not work there okay my oven's ready now what can you do with that you know what I really like to do is I like to sprinkle a little bit of uh, cinnamon on the top of that so that when you cut it just a little just a little bit it gives it just a nice little coating on the top than that. 
Perfect. All right, let's get this into the oven. And we will leave these here maybe about 30 minutes. These little pans are new to me, so it could even be about 25 minutes. I don't set a timer because I set my nose and I set my eyes. And that's banana bread. <laughs>